recording this part. So, all right, so we've gone over after pro gel, give me pack, transport, you know all the stuff you guys are learning in different geology. Transport, uh, what else? Good question. What happens if an issue is the whole They they more than likely will. If they find that it's an issue and they're thinking that there's a mis there's something not happening well in the plane, they will call. And they will report it. And they will, you know. But the, the likelihood of it, so here, but I'm glad you said that because that's why it's important to have it in a rigid file as an identified cover for you. Because the people who pick those instruments up, uh, 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 Jocelyn, Jocelyn, when they, did, when, did you get to see that part? Did you see where they were picking it up? Uh, no, I didn't. So no, I just remember what came in the shop. They would put them in, in that, or a bigger one. Yeah. Yeah. And when the, the so the team that picks them up usually are the courier. What's a courier do? Oh, they do that. Oh, they do. And so I actually spent time with our couriers because I needed to make sure they understood what was happening and that they were transporting it correctly in their trucks because in their trucks they're also delivering clean and sterile supplies. See how all this stuff needs to come together because they didn't even know they're couriers. And you can't be upset. That's their job. They just go where they're told and they turn or they deliver. And that's what they do. So now they know if you do this appropriate. I'm not one of the couriers, so we need blood in there. It was like, uh, I hope not. But it has been treated. These are, these are instruments that have been used on and in paper. Really? <laughs> it's true. <laughs> but, you know, and even though I laugh at him, he's so funny to me when he really talks about it. But he didn't know. And so it, I saw an opportunity for these guys really needed to know what was happening so that they too could protect themselves and that we are not cross-contaminating in the truck. Because mind you, they have their, they're, the, they're the ones who are bringing your clean supplies to your clinics. You know, all the other things that you use that are clean and sterile, you know. and But what you didn't know is so the instruments are on that truck as well. So now, there is a system that's in place so that we, because what did I tell you guys yesterday? The clean and dirty, she was more good. You really need that. You really do need that. So all of these things also keep, uh, we're doing the best that we can to keep them separate. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes, ma'am. So so yes, very good question. The way they know that they're yours. Now this one is uh, mine, but <laughs> but what they would have is so when they go to cell processing, they're going to do. There's a we have a system called SPN. So it, and this is a de like a data tracking system. And so uh, let me see that I need any instruments. Uh, you know what I did? I think I opened all of them. But oh, one package. So, so see this here? So see this, this here with the barcode on it? Mm -hmm. So that would also, if that if sterile processing department set it up right, everything, these are ours, so that's why they don't have it on, but it would be, there would be a barcode somewhere on this. So when they get it, they will scan it, and it will come up. So what clinic are you in? Like right now, what clinic oh, are you? Urgent care. So at urgent care, which one? So the wheelchair urgent care. Yeah. So when they get their bin, so uh, the courier that I used to work with, uh, I, I rode with him just uh, a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. And he was amazing. But um, 
So when they would get, when they get the, when he would drop, or whoever now drops it off at uh, Santa Monica, so those those instruments go to Santa Monica. The, when they first get the, doesn't matter what's in it, they're gonna identify who instruments just came. But also, there's a tracking system even for instruments, if they set it up for it. That's why when you guys set them up, one of the things in your package that you have is infra, oh, I may not have given it to you guys because I dealt with strictly product labeling, but I do have another form that, when you, that goes out with instruments that will say the quantity of instruments that you're sending, the name of the instrument, the manufacturer number of that instrument, even any descriptive parts of it. So remember when, the uh, man scissors girl. She has <laughs> <laughs> but her but remember when I said she's got a it's a it's a straight iris uh and a half uh, scissor. Okay. And it's an iris scissor. It's not just a scissor. Because there's hundreds of scissors. There's a these are um these are set these are seven inch uh medicine bomb scissors. These are very common. These are what we use in surgery like every day. Well, these are like common surgery scissors. And I met some bomb scissors and these are they're wonderful. Every doctor will use them. <coughs> they come in all kinds of sizes and they're different. Some are straight, some are curved, some, you know, there's all kinds. So you want to identify your instruments so that you get them back. So, yeah. So does that answer your question? Yeah. Okay. But that's a good question. You guys have, you ask great questions for like for me. This is really great. I love it. Okay, so but they would be identified by they would have some kind of identifier. But I even tell a clinic, right? Take that felt tip permanent marker and write your name on your clinic. Because I mean, write your clinic name on your your um, bin because there are they'll give lots of bins from lots of clinics. Okay, and sadly, they don't always do all this stuff that's a question. So you kind of have to make sure that you get your stuff back. Okay, so you guys have learned about aquifer gel with the street cleaning. We've learned about how to transport it. I won't go into, but we know about personal protective equipment that you should wear if you use your best judgment. But if you're going to out of play, you will have to see <laughs> but, um, but that's not going to happen. What else did we talk about? So I'm trying to move us into, because I know we only we have less than an hour, and I really want to try to give you guys some idea about what you're going to do, what you would do with those instruments. So you're, even though that instrument is not soil that you have, but so move to the next uh portion of this, which would be um, general instrument decontamination and care essential. You see that one? It's in red. Okay. So basically what that, what I'm going to talk to you guys really quickly about is once those instruments, once you, once you are at a point where you can now clean, disinfect that instrument, that's where we're going to go right now. So in a real world, in the dirty would not be in the same room. room. In a lot of your clinics, it's probably going to be in the same room. But there will be, there should be uh, processes in place to separate what's clean, what's dirty. All right. So if you're thinking workflow, if I came in with my soiled instruments in a red rigid biohazard identified covered container, I'm going to go to what part of the room first, clean or dirty? <laughs> We're going to go to the dirty room, so the dirty part of the room. So if this is the dirty part of the room, what's going on over here? What do you think? <laughs> dirty stuff. <laughs> okay, so dirty things are going on over there. Like what? Like what? Okay, we want to decontaminate. Let's go to decontamination. So in this section, you would, I would talk to you guys about what I label as T2B. Okay, and it's actually on the back page of that first of that. T T D. T is gonna stand for time, T is gonna stand for temperature, D is gonna stand for detergent or dilution. T T D. It could be D T T, I just for some reason like T T D. That's how I always taught it. 
Okay, so let's talk dilution and detergent. What do you already know has to be a factor in anything to clean the industry? You already know this. It has to be enzymatic, right? It has to be, enzyme has to be the driving power behind it, right? So at UCLA, I only approve clean detergent. This is what I recommend. Recommend means this is what I think you should use. Suggest, it's an idea, it's a thought, it's probably a good one, but no one's going to really force for him. So, but the recommendation, I only recommend two, and the only reason I recommend the other one is because I have to have an alternative. Okay? So, but this is what I recommend, and I'm going to tell you in a minute why this is a, why I recommend this. So, remember, I told you, everything that we look at, I do it so that it's going to be the best, it's going to be the best outcome, it's going to be the easiest for you, it's going to make, in my opinion, more sense. Okay? So, this is the Ecolab, and I do not have an investment in Ecolab, but they do make good stuff. So, Ecolab brand, enzymatic detergent. It also has to be low sudsing. So, you're going to learn something here. Low suds means not a lot of suds, right? But in, in, the, in most worlds, people think more bubbles, more clean, right? It's the absolute opposite. Now, I'll go home tonight, and I'm going to run a very hot tub of water with lots of bubbles, because I'm cute like that. <laughs> and I'm going to get in that tub because I'm tired. I really want to go to and I started back running, so, you know, my legs are like screaming at me and stuff. So, uh, I'm going to get in that tub so I can just, just smooth out the day. But I don't take a bath to get to it. I don't it, right? But if you're washing your dishes, you know how you just spray all that dove or whatever dish, what do you use? Like, what do you wash your dishes with? Dawn, what else? What do you use? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my so, but whatever you're using, most people, you don't measure it, do you? Do you measure your detergent? You just kind of go. And then you run the water and, and you get more bubbles and then you just start washing your dishes. So you're washing dishes in the water and when they come up, what, what, what's coming up on those dishes? All those bubbles. What gets in those bubbles? Everything, anything is in it. When it I, the reason I take a shower after my bath is because what's coming off my body? Dead stuff. All the dead stuff. You ever get out and wonder why that yeah. ring is there? <laughs> yeah, it's there. <laughs> well, mine's just glitter, but it's but still the glitter is all over my back, right? And so you know, but the the idea is when I, so that means when I stand up, that's also on me. You ever dry off and wonder why it still seems like there's dirt rubbing off on your skin? Is it just me? Is it just me? <laughs> I know it happens to you. But, uh, <laughs> but nonetheless, it's because sometimes the soaps that we use have a lot of stuff in Low sudsing, you don't want bubbles. Bubbles hold things. And if I'm trying to take things off, why would I go through all this trouble of the right type of detergent? And it's also going to have to be the right temperature. What smarty pants know the temperature that water should be when you're going for this and that? Did you know it had to be a certain temperature? Yeah, I, I gave you the answer. So <laughs> 85, 12, 85, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 85 to 105. Now, a year ago, it was 80 to 100. So I don't know why they, why CDC decided to change it. I have no idea. But they did. They changed the, they changed the temperature. That's pretty warm. That's some warm water, right? Mm -hmm. kind of hot. All right, so, uh, read the IFB. Sorry, you should have took the language. Oh, yeah. 
Uh, you would, that would have been hilarious if she would have started reading it in another language. I would have fallen out of the Notice how, you see how, how uh, specific they are? Mm -hmm. The IFP says, add how much? So have U.S. fluid ounces. They want you to know we're not talking any other country's measurement. And I just think this is really important. Yeah. Important. Per gallon, not just anybody's gallon, U.S. gallon. And I really think that's important. So this, this enzymatic um, detergent that is low sudsing is telling you what the dilution has to be. The dilution has to be a half ounce per gallon of water. And you think, well, that doesn't sound like enough to clean these soiled instruments. You know, this is why I like this because it only requires a half ounce per gallon. And you have to, if, it, if there's a, me, if, if the IFU gives you a measurement, you've got to show that you measured it. So that means you would use like a something, a device, what I usually tell them is just get a med cup that measures a half ounce. And you've got to show, because that's what uh, an inspector is going to say. How do, I, how do you know? Because that's the rule. The rule is, if I'm going to disinfect, I've got to do it exactly like it says. I need to know what the, the temperature of water should be. You already know now. It should be. 85 to 105. Now here, hold on to your seat, guys. You're going to knock you out. Because it's going to talk about the temperature of water. That's important. So, it just needs to be warm. That's the eye of you on this. Now, why do you think that's important to me in a in an ambulatory clinic? Have you followed me around? You had to. That's like the absolute correct answer. We cannot govern the water in our clinics. Now, in the hospital, we can. We own the building. Or in some of our newer clinics, where we own the building. And we can finagle the water to get the temperature right. And if you, if, if you were in a um, sterile processing department, what you would see is they have at least four, but they have more, 10-gallon sinks. Imagine it. 10 gallon sinks, and in each one, there's a thermostat that's in that water. So when they run the water, it's gonna measure how much they, so it's a 10 gallon sink, because mind you, they're watching thousands of instruments in there. They're gonna fill that up with water, and they can't start, and they're gonna put the, so if they have, if they're putting 10 gallons of water, how much, uh, five, five ounces. That's all you're going to use. But now they have automatic dispensers on their wall that is going to automatically, but even though it's automatic, guess what they have to do? They still got to show that they measure because it's automatic. Those things can change. And if you cannot guarantee that the amount that it puts out is what the IFB says, see how important this is why I started in the beginning with telling you what the policy says. The policy says, that you will follow IFU. <laughs> so do, do you see why that part becomes so important? Like when you first learned IFU, it was just funny that, okay, so IFU is something for you. But now you have to see why. It's a reason why they said that. Because UCLA didn't tell you measure or have not. They didn't tell you that, but they expect that you, you're gonna follow the rule that's on here. By following that rule, because if we follow the rule, we know now that the right detergent in the right amount, in the at the right temperature, that's your killing ground. That's how you're going to be disinfect. All right, because we're not in a high level disinfect like uh, we talked about yesterday with the trophon, which is set up and designed to do that. It already it's going to come with you're going to put the detergent in it and just push a button. It's set up, but in this one, you're going to actually have to manually after those instruments have been 
pre so see why you also want to pre preen it because if I can't get to them for six hours, I could I could have dried blood, crusty. <laughs> I can have gross. Just can I tell you about the the the, the tray of about seventy vaginal speculum that came to my SPD department and my team runs to my office and they're like, you've got to come see this. I am not washing this. I go, you know, I talk about vaginal speculum a lot because that was like one of the things that drove our team crazy. <coughs> um, but this was upsetting because when they open it, there are all these, well, you couldn't even see them because they were all black and fussy. So, why do you think, what do you think, mm -hmm. now fuzz, so fuzz means what? Spores. That means spores. So if they're spores, if they capture in the air, what does that mean? You can breathe that, right? Ah, yeah. So I said to my team, shut it down, close it, I call that department and get your stuff. I will not expose my team to this. Because your lack of following instructions is not going to let me put them at risk. But in the clinic, so mind you, that would be like if you guys were really clinic, that would be you guys. And they're stuck. You know, now what they ended up doing is they, they didn't want to be a little bit. Because they probably had, obviously, someone forgot something. What do you think they forgot? They forgot the good gel, the blue stuff, the gel. Yes, the enzymes. They forgot that part. Yeah, I, mean, I mean, it doesn't take long. All you need is the right setup. It's already moist. All you need, you know, maybe a day or two. They're busy. They remind me, they're busy. They really are. I understand it. It's still, but the responsibility falls on the point to follow the rules. And that's why knowing the power of what the tool that you have helps you to make better decisions or set up a workflow. Does that make sense to you? Like, and you guys will feel it when you're in the clinic because you'll feel like you're just like, you know, if you don't have a plan or know what's going on, you're going to feel like you're just walking in crazy circles, really. And you'll feel lost. If you don't have information, if you don't have knowledge, if things, if it doesn't make sense to you, you probably some people will just not do it. They don't get it. They don't understand why it's so important. So I can't even drive it home enough. I know the rules. If you follow the rules, all you gotta do is simple as what you guys have done and demonstrate it. When you read the IFP, what does it say? And you you know that. It, this only has to be warm water. So even though you know the temperature of water, it just needs to be warm. I don't need to know that it's 85 to 105 degrees. In a clinic, that matters. Now in the hospital setting, they even though they use this, they use this, but they still measure it because our standards of practice, our standards are always to do the rule and stay on top of the rule. So that if it comes back, we can at least say, yes, we follow the rule and we document, we show that we measure the temperature, even though we technically, based on the use of this, don't really have to measure the temperature because it doesn't indicate. Now, the other one that I have to choose, which is the McKesson brand. McKesson is the less expensive brand. But remember, did I say this to you guys yesterday? You get what you pay for? <laughs> you get what you pay for. Now, if you read, well, let me tell you, when you on theirs, do you, oh, is it in the book? Do you see it? Yeah. Yeah. And, it, and it's so iffy, the way it's written. And then it even says, well, the temperature, it'll, it mentions the temperature, and it gives you this big range. And so it is my summation that they might have been sued somewhere. And so they made sure to write their their IFU so that they can be covered now. And you do have to do that when there's a new problem. You've got to now go back and show that you can do something different or better to include an action that may or may not have happened, okay? So the, the McKesson brand, and so if you went into a clinic that you're doing that process, they may not be using this. They may be using the McKesson brand. 
It is enzymatic, it is low sudsy, it is that. But the way the IFU is written makes the job harder for the clinician in a um, in the like ambulatory clinic. Because you, you know, then you have to buy a thermostat. But what's the point of having a thermostat if you can't do anything about the temperature of the water? What's the point in that? But you, you know, so, but uh, the return box, oh, I don't know, no, sorry. I'm sure they do it like that, I'm sure they just do it. And that's what I would have done. No, I mean, not really. If they would have brought them back, and they would have had to rent some, they don't have any way to do that. They should not have sent that. That was a risk I felt like for my staff that I wasn't willing to take for. I may have taken it if they had called me and said, hey, we, we left this, you know, we forgot about it, and I think we, you know, somebody put, failed to put Ocapozole on it. But they just kind of tried to slide it in there. And to a team, so the, the issue, the set, um, the central, the central, uh, the central processing test technicians, they, like you guys, they go to school for that. They go to school for a year and a half. And they have to sit, they have to do a thousand um, hours, uh, no, a thousand hours of OT uh, on the job, and then they have to sit for certification. So they know instruments. But what they don't do is what you do. So they're not in the clinic. They, they're hands-on or their direct patient care is strictly through instruments. And trust me, it is direct patient care, right? But they don't know. Like, they don't know that patient A is using this and that. They just know when they get them, they know exactly how to clean them. That's why it's important to them. When did this, when did this get done? Because they need, to, in order for them to produce the best outcome for you when you come back to pick them up, you've got to give them to them at the best, at the best, you know, uh, pre-cleaning stage that you can. Yes, How do you, how would you dispose of them? Yeah. So, they could, I mean, they could just trash it. They could just trash it. Yeah. Uh, you know, honestly, I don't know what they did with them. Um, I've taken a lot of them off of their hands anyway because they were just damaged and mm -hmm. they were bad anyway. But that particular big bin, you've seen the really big bin that they have. So there are various sizes of these bins. And so there's a really big one and it was just full of them. And I'm, what my thought is is that they probably just on a busy day for them. They didn't, but they were not treating them because those instruments, we know what the policy says, right? That tells me they didn't do it. They, they weren't doing it. And so for those reasons alone, it, there were more, it's not just forgotten. It was neglect. They didn't do the job. I'm not going to subject a team of people to that. You know, inhaling that. I don't know what's going on in that bin. I just saw fuzzy black people. I think we do know what's going on in that thing. I know what's going on in that thing. <laughs> Fuzzy blackness is going on in that thing. Okay, so, and time. Time refers to how long instruments should soak in the solution that you create. Okay? So, they should, when you create this unit, because now we're ready to wash these instruments, that we will bring them to disinfectant. How am I going to bring them to disinfectant? Give me one of the components that's going to bring them to disinfectant. Time, which is? So, any instrument can be soaked from 1 to 15 minutes. But at UCLA, our standard of practice is always going to be fine. Unless what? Unless what? Well, what can change that? The IFU can change it. If the IFU has another specific time to do it, then you're going to follow the IFU. But the standard of practice at UCLA is always going to be five minutes. So that makes it easy. Five minutes. So I created my killing ground. The killing ground is time, which is, and uh, solution and deletion, which is, People lab on McKesson, but we're going to just 
we can talk about the air. The people that are in a half ounce per gallon. In a clinic, you're only going to do a gallon of that. Okay? So, in your sink, that when you, wherever you uh, disinfect instruments, that's all you can do in there. That is not a hand washing sink. You can't do anything that pertains to anything outside of disinfecting the instruments. So, the way instruments are, are, are disinfected, and I don't have with me, but there you use a disposable brush. Have you used that before? You guys have Looks like a toothbrush, and we have it there all kinds. But what I have put up is there's either this one that's a little purple, looks like a little cheeky toothbrush they give you go to the dentist. I think a party gift or something. Mm -hmm. that you're never gonna use. You ever get those? This <laughs> is awful. But it's, so we use those, and those you throw away after each. Um, after each episode, let me say, or if it becomes compromised and they get compromised really quick because the person will start falling off a little bit. Or what most of our clinics use is a brush, it's a very sturdy brush. Um, it's, a, it's bigger than a toothbrush, but not like a hair brush. It's, you know, it's bigger and it has a handle. And you wash instruments under that solution that you feel. See why you want PPE on them? Because mm -hmm. you're washing under. Now, this washing is just some long, drawn out process because what's already happened before you even got to wash them you see clean them so what do you think is going to here's a question good question no maybe before you when, you when you're creating your solution um at a half ounce per gallon with uh, 85 to 105 degrees uh, water uh, and you're going to soak them for five minutes. Before I soak them, do I need to rinse the uh, aquifer gel off? <laughs> and the ISP does not tell you to do so. You do not have to wash it off because of what you already answered. But it's done its job. Now I'm going to put it in there, and that 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 is going to now, it really is going to come off in the wash. In the wash. It comes out in the wash. And then you're after five minutes. So if it's five minutes, I need to time it. That means you have to have a timer. So you have to have a timer, and you have to show that you timed it for five minutes. Then you're going to wash those instruments, and so underwater, and then rinse under running water. That's how you do it. I make up the rules. Those are the rules. You're going to create the right solution at the right temperature. Uh, with the right dilution and soak for the right amount of time, you're going to wash with an approved disposable brush under that dilution, rinse under running water, and then dry the instrument. Now, I told you guys yesterday how instruments should be, be dry. In a clinic, not <coughs> No one's going to order air. I have one clinic that actually will order air. <laughs> Um, but most clinics are not, and I understand that. But the instrument still has to dry. I just recently have an approved uh, drying cloth because you cannot use anything that has or produces lint on an instrument that goes in, into, or interrupts a patient's body. Okay, did you know that? Why do you think that? I mean, it makes sense, but why do you think? If it, there's a foreign object and they can get into a patient's body from fish fields, I've seen it, you've taken it out. So it does happen. So you cannot use, you, you can't, so you can't dry it with like a standard, anything that produces milk. So that means you need to use, if you're going to hand dry, and I just literally just, we just approved a particular product, it took me a long time to find this, because in a clinic, you need, Sometimes they need to be able to turn these instruments over faster because if not, you're going to have to let them air dry. How long does it take for anything to air dry? Does it? <laughs> Who knows? I don't know. So what clinics do is it does take somewhere in there. They they have to they end up leaving the instruments overnight to dry. Um, what are the possibilities? What do you think could happen with that? Could these instruments? Are at a, they're disinfected when we go to dry them, right? Yeah. Well, when, when is it disinfected? That's an actual true answer. 
But where do where do you before a computer is dry, disinfectant probably has to be wet. Then we can move to the next part of it, of instrument being, um, once they're dry, now we can move, we're getting now closer to sterilization. Look at all that work that you had to do, we haven't even gotten to sterilization, right? It's a, it's a lot of stuff, and this is the day-to-day, -day. yes ma'am. It really is going to depend, because, um, the forced air in a clinic is probably going to be cost more because you're, you're having to order it. You've got to have space because it, it comes in a <laughs> It's like this tall and it's on. Then you need a rack to hold it on. And then if it's on a rack, you've got to be able to bolt it so that if the world shapes like it's going here in California, mm -hmm. that it doesn't hurt. And it's big. I mean, it's, you know, you've seen the big oxygen tank, right? The big green ones. Well, they have a the yellow one that has <laughs> air in it, okay? And no one, I mean, I only have one clinic that, that does that. No one. So when you ask your stuff to be in the central location versus in the clinic, you can use the in the clinic. So in the clinic, yeah, in the clinic, I actually am try. I am now, but I've literally just, this has only been just in the, like, just since, like, December that we finally found, got this tile and got it approved that I can use it. Because before they were, they were saying, well, you have to do it with something sterile. But that didn't make sense to me because the instrument itself isn't sterile. Clean, I 
understand, but not still. And you can use, can you use the power on multiple instruments? Yes, because you're just drying. Yeah. And those instruments are disinfected. And let me just tell you this part. So remember you were wearing PPE to protect you from those soiled instruments. When those instruments are disinfected, you're going to need to wear a glove when you're handling the clean instruments. Why do you think so? Yeah. Yeah. You didn't want somebody germs on you, but we don't want your germs on the disinfected instruments. Makes sense. Because our bodies have natural oils and things like that. So we don't want that on those instruments. Because now you've changed the whole trajectory of that instrument. It was a dirty, dirty, it was a soiled instrument. And now you went through all of the steps in the process to get it now as a disinfectant instrument. Can I use that instrument now if I'm in a hurry and I really need to do something with a patient? Can I use it? We don't use sterile. We don't use unsterile instruments on patients, like never. But you want to know what? It's happening. Someone let a, a doctor push them into you. Well, go get it. Look, they said it's not sterile yet. Well, I, but I need it. But see, this is why it's important to understand things like uh, the process. And so you can, if you, if you only, why would you? I, I don't understand how you want anything in there. Why would you have it? But even if you had two and that patient, that doctor was using and had to use two on, on patients, you need, you, you, you need to be able to be smart enough because you now have the information that, hey, I've got it, that some, someone's got to stop and get that instrument sterile because he's going to have, or doctor's going to have more patients later. Because we'll run into a problem if we don't. But you've got the information, you have all of the tools in place, or if you have the information, you have the tools in place, you can make better decisions. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, that's the next. So, um, so now we're going, now our instruments are disinfected, right? They're disinfected. Now I can get ready. I want to now move to sterilization, but I need to have all the things in place to sterilize. What I'm going to sterilize it in, what monitors I need to tell me if, if if something is going to be sterilized. So remember yesterday I told you guys 270 for four minutes. What was that for? How to play sterilization. So you guys don't have bionic eyes like I do. So how you that means you're, you're going to need something to tell you when 270 degrees for four minutes happens in an autoclave, right? And that's where indicators come in. So uh, did I ask you guys that about what, did I ask you yesterday about indicators? So then I'm asking today, what's an indicator? Anybody? Sometimes, so something that tells me something happened, right? And so here, so the mindset I want you guys to have is the thing that we want to know if it happened is if 270 degrees happened for four minutes. Because that's going to be the basis for sterilization, okay? So we've done all of that to get to 270 for four minutes. But I've got to have something to tell me if that happens. So anything that goes into an autoclave is going to have an indicator. It's going to have some kind of indicator. And the indicator is going to tell me what? Four minutes. Okay. So... Indicators. What's an indicator or an index? So I'll show you. I'm glad you asked. So these are called sterilization patterns. Not zip like that or any of that. Not even human patterns. They kind of look like them, right? This is where someone got the idea of the human patterns. No. So these are, um, these are called. Um, Sterilization patterns, they come in a plethora of sizes, shape and all, but I'm going to tell you secrets about it. One, I don't care what size it is, only one or two instruments can go in. That's all. That's it. So if you're going to clinic and you see that they've got like 14 instruments in one, call me. <laughs> so, it's not how it's supposed to be. They are only made for one to two instruments. Okay? So, on there, you'll find indicators. There's indicators on them. Show, tell me if you see it. 
the indicator. You see it? So those are um, not stuff you, you still use yourself. Yeah. You got to So, so the indicator, you see them? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you see the indicator? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, you can all have eyes in your head. I don't know what I'm saying. 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 I don't know. So do you guys see the indicator? One says scheme, right? What's the other one? Is it ETO? Mm -hmm. Okay. Remember, ETO was gas, right? We talked about that yesterday. Now, are we gassing these instruments? No. no. So, do we care if that indicator does anything? No. 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 But the one that says steam, uh, that's the one we care about because your autoclave is a steam autoclave, okay? That is, so, the 270 is steam and heat. Okay, and it, and it needs to be exposed for four minutes. So at 270, at four minutes, what's going to happen to the indicator? It's going to Uh-huh, it's going to change colors. It's going to become a darker color. And I have a used one somewhere else. So, so see the, the um, See the back of, you see the indicator down here? So the green one, which is the gas one on here, you see that gas? It, it's still green, the green gas. But the brown ones, they used to be, you know, it says they used to be, uh, it says it just says changes to brown. So I think they used to be pink. But maybe they, they used to be pink or blue. But it, but the, what, we, what we want it to be is the color that it, it had that changes to when it's been exposed to 270 for four minutes, and that's what this bag did. Um, those, they, they're usually at the top of the bag. Those are the more modern ones. This is old. It, once it hits 270 for four minutes, that color will change. Anything, and tomorrow we'll talk more about <laughs> the other stuff. Anything that goes into the autoclave, these, these are, these are going to be tip covers but they even have indicators on it. They have an indicator mark on it, and we'll go over that on tomorrow. And even the chemical indicators, have you guys seen these before? I have a weird smell for you. But, and, and I'll tell you what the policy talks about on chemical indicators. Chemical indicators are tougher indicators. They're tougher to penetrate by heat. But we want that. Why do, you, why do I want a tough indicator? I want to make sure. So this is my backup system. This is what's saying, and, and, oh, well, let me ask you this. So the indicator on that bag is going to tell me what? That the bag got sterile, right? Mm -hmm. Do I want the bag sterile? Mm -hmm. What do I want sterile? Mm -hmm. Which is inside the bag. That's where the chemical indicator goes. That's the toughest one to penetrate. So if this can be penetrated, then the likelihood of sterilization is even more probable. Make sense? Right, so, and not only that, there are rules to this. It's, it's not just a tough one, it's a class five. It has to be a class five. Because right now, well, it was the toughest one to penetrate. There is now a class six indicator. Uh, we're not converting to class six until I'm told to convert. Because that's a big thing, because everybody uses class five. And then, so, if we, you know, they, Class six is there, but and it's even tougher than class five. But we're the hospital. We're not converting to this. this no one's making us do it. It's not even said. We just know that it's it's there. So they could be in the testing processes right now, but it does exist. The class six does exist. So I'm gonna pause. That's, that's a lot of information, right, guys? Right? But did you get any of it? Uh, did you get it? so? Mm -hmm. And we still we still haven't sterilized anything yet. <laughs> just, <laughs> We're just getting there. You're getting there. But th does this make you understand more like why I don't want this in the clinic? Yeah. You, you guys, are, you have enough with, with <coughs> being in there, being nurses. And this is going to be a part of it. This is a very normal part, huh? <laughs> don't tell me that. Really? <laughs> Wait a minute, you can't say that. 
So, no, let me tell you. No, we are, but we're saying, like, how the nurses at times, they're like, Oh, like when we're not, at least when we're not there, they'll be like, I don't want to do this because we don't have time. No, but you know what? Honestly, that's a reportable thing. I mean, seriously, that's it's that's not good. And not saying it to, to you guys. I mean, seriously, if we have clinics that are not practicing safe, we need to know that so we can help them. Because what did I tell you guys either today or yesterday? People always, the excuse is, well, we don't have time until something happens. And I'm telling you, if you're not following the rules, and I don't mean when I say you, I'm not talking about you, but if the rules aren't being followed, and you're putting people at risk, including yourself, you're putting yourself at risk, you're putting your career at risk, how would you do that? No. So, so if, feel free to tell me, we, we handle these things all the time, and it's not a tattletale thing, you're patient advocates. If, if we know that a practice that you guys are telling you, as you learn and you will see things in these clinics, you're going to go, because what you'll see is what I don't <coughs> want to see happen to you guys. When you fall into this lethargic behavior of caring for people half casually, mm -hmm. you know? What happened? Well, I mean, no, no, no. You, you, you're the patient advocate. Now, I already told you what my thoughts on about patient advocacy and what NAs do. I trust that you guys are just, the idea is to, because you can't be afraid to take care of people. It's what you do. And it's not just when I see them and I take their blood pressure and I take their temperature. It's even that. If I'm not preparing that room correctly for the next patient, then why do I, why, why waste my time cleaning the, the instruments here? Why, why? Mm -hmm. Does it matter? And I do think it does matter. And, I mean, there, even the fact that you guys notice it, and I just say that, and this is, like, for me, it's just, it gets real serious in the on, on those things, only because I would, I don't, I don't enjoy knowing that you guys are seeing bad practice. But you guys have to be that different, though. Mm -hmm. um, that's the hope, is that you're the different. Well, doctors are, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> but the thing with doctors is they are contracting for you. You guys work for UCLA. They're suable. You work for UCLA, UCLA will be sued for you. You understand what I'm saying? So I'm just saying, um, you know, without even all of that, the doctors are, I know, trust me, I've worked with doctors for many years, and yeah. I, I get that, but it's, that's the reason why I say things like, don't let someone push you or pressure you to do what you know is better. Like <laughs> seriously, it's very bad. You know, we, um, yeah. So as you guys go through, you learn, you know, because I don't know what the real, what their reasons are. I can only go by what you guys are saying. But I would just say, you just make sure you're doing what you know to do right. And when you guys are done, you know, or let your teacher know, your instructor know, and because we, that's what ambulatory care nursing is about. That's what we do. We, we go and we make sure, because I don't know, maybe there is a person that is kind of bullying them to, to be, to make them feel that they can't practice safe, but it can't be that way. Okay, does that make sense? Does that make sense? So, and just, I mean, we're here, we're here to take care of you. Those kind of things, I'm not saying that you to tell me, but I would say, I think once you know something and whatever that conviction part is on you guys, and it's really because you, you learn. Your instructors have told you how things should be. We're letting you know and we're reinforcing that and you're seeing something different. So you're doing the, the right thing, but I would say while you, especially in the, you know, don't change, keep doing what you know to do right. Don't fall into the pattern of sometimes people who just done it for long. I mean, we came into this seeing them doing it just not right. And usually it's because they just didn't have anyone to help them. And then you come in and you bring rules and they're like, but well, we never did that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, any questions? It's, it's nine o'clock and it's a lot. I know it's a lot, it's a lot, but it's all good stuff, right? <laughs> Do you mind bringing them tomorrow, please? No. Okay. Yeah, bring them because you, as you can see, you guys just did what the two pages. <laughs>